Our guest. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jack King Guy. He's from the Grafton Woodlands Association. And you guys know that the guy here is sitting on the lap of the team. And we're trying to get in here as well. But we can tell us how to do that. <laughs> I can't tell you too much about downtown east side lap. Um, um, I, I've been very much involved with Grandview and uh, with our own problems. I mean, I've been reading about what's going on down here, but uh, I, I don't know anything about it. So, but I will give you some you know, general stuff. You, you have to remember that uh, the lap process is completely different from the three other processes that are going on. Um, the biggest, well, I, I believe there are a lot of differences in the terms of reference. One of which was, in terms of reference, took many, many months to negotiate. Uh, for us, we had one afternoon session, and essentially we're told this is what you got, and you deal with it, right? Uh, we, we do not have any form of a joint management committee of any kind, um, which is um, something we should discuss because I, I think there are pluses and minuses to joint management groups. Uh, what happened for us is that we had six months, of, we're actually very excited, we haven't had a plan in Grandview since 1979. Many of us didn't think that there was a need for one, but okay, 30 years, let's have a plan for um, We were quite excited at the beginning and we had six months worth of open houses and workshops, all to do with the soft stuff arts and culture, heritage, parks, public realm, public safety, sidewalks, etc. Um, and then they, the planners went away for a month and they came back in June with the Emerging Directions document, which um, covered all of those areas pretty well. You know, a lot of the things I heard in the workshops were in the document. Unfortunately, the rest of the document was a massive amount of land use rezoning none of which we had not spoken of, not one word, in any of the workshops, any of the open houses, any of the discussions. So it was, um, it was a complete shock to everyone. And in some ways that was an advantage <coughs> because it, the, the changes that they proposed, especially as they hadn't mentioned it to anyone, were so big um, that it, it was easy for us to get people on the streets. Um, and this is where I want to talk a little bit about joint management committees. One of the advantages of not having a joint management committee is that as soon as things went wrong in Grandview, we could go the direct action route. There was nothing in our way. We could just go on the streets and go to the media and do what we needed to do. Had there been a joint management committee, we may have had some legal impediments, but also there would have been a temptation to try and use the committee to try and solve those problems, which I, I don't think would have happened. So we, we were able, because we were uh, not involved at that level, in that management level, we were able to really get hundreds and hundreds of people on the streets. Uh, Marple did the same. Marple was in the same position. He didn't have a joint management committee. And as you saw in, in pretty quick order, they had 2,000 lot signs all over the neighborhood. Um, and that direct action worked. I mean, we managed to get, in Grandview, we managed to get the plan stopped dead uh, at the beginning of July. And actually, nothing has really happened since July. We're now six months, five months ahead. And we've had no further work on, on the plan. Um, in Marple, uh, you know, well, what happened was, you know, the council, uh, I think, was so, Penny Ballon was so pissed at the bad press they were getting. We had enough bad press out there for them. But she insisted the planning department come up with a new plan. Uh, this was called the Jackson Report. Jackson spent a couple of months writing it. Didn't speak to us very much about it. Um, he delivered that on September 25th. And it was approved by council. And I can talk about the Grandview part only, which, which gave us a 12-month extension on the process. Um, and added this thing called a citizens' assembly. We had, we had at that point asked for a, um, a joint management group, which they, that they refused. Uh, but they gave us this thing called a citizens' assembly. Uh, there was no definition of it in the Jackson report. And Jackson was told to, re to meet with us, and he specifically said that he would in, in 
from the council and to deliver back to council in December um, new plans for resetting the process of designing the citizens assembly and how we would move forward from January. Um, and here we are now, almost beginning of December, and we've had not a single conversation with him at all. Uh, I actually speak to Jackson about once a week just to say to him, how come you haven't spoken to me yet? <laughs> um, and he writes back and says, well, we're still thinking about it. So at the same time, what we decided to do was to was to get together a group that's about 60 people who have been meeting and talking for the last two months. A pretty ad hoc group, the normal members of GWAC, a pretty good representative selection of people across the neighborhood. And we have roughed out what we consider to be how a citizen's assembly should work in Grandview, what, how it should be recruited, and how it should, what roles and responsibilities. They haven't made time to meet with us at all. Um, so that's really where we're at. Um, as I say, had we had a joint management group from the beginning, maybe not all of the problems would have come up, but I think we would have been a little bit more tied to what we could have achieved afterwards. You know, some people think we've won now because nothing's happened for six months. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, sometime in the new year, the process will start again. It's a question of, of what control we have at that point. And that's what we're trying to get to now. Is, um, is a citizens assembly, hopefully that can act as the management break on planning. Um, one of the things they did, you know, one of the reasons they gave us 12 months, we, we had asked for, um, originally we'd asked for a six month extension. And at the point of the Jackson report in September, we had changed our minds and we had asked for them um, to finish the uh, project by October. Uh, because we believe that it was, um, it's this council's terms of reference that we're operating under, and it should be this council that deals with the consequences. But of course they skipped that, they gave us 12 months, which was deliberately to put it the other side of the election. But, you know, given a lot more thought to that, it, it, that may not be such a bad thing. So I think if, if we can get it started again in January or even February, We'll probably have five or six months of workshops again, but this time it'll be land use and zoning workshops. That'll finish around the end of summer. And that's when we can start making a noise again just before the election. So it may actually work to our favor. We'll see. Um, we'll see. So that's where we are. Uh, discussion and the questions? Actually, that's a good idea. You have to introduce yourself. I just did. You just did? Okay. <laughs> uh, any questions? Discussion? Go back. Richard, Richard. So, how would um, the GNC be involved with the uh, assessment? Uh, it wouldn't. With the GNC? No, it wouldn't, because it, it's purely a grab you wouldn't think. I mean, it might be something like. Right. Well, um, as, as I say, I really can't talk directly about that because I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know the details of it. Um, I've read what I've read. Um, if you're going to have a joint management committee, I, I guess every every party should be involved. That's one of the should be one of the key things. You have the village council involved? Uh, not for us directly. No. Is there some members? Yeah, there are. Yeah. <coughs> well, yeah. I just joined the airport, so I've always been for the environment. It's my background. The village of Vancouver is really involved with some community gardens in Grandview. Yeah. And that really, they haven't really um, poked their heads above the parapet on anything else, really. Yeah, it's, it's, more, more, it's more about people cooperating and, and building community, yeah. community building. You know. I just, uh, speaking of like things, like that in the city being involved, community gardens, one big one right there. Um, I, right now, live in Grandview Woodlands, and it's kind of remarkable that you said that because, yeah, right from my house, we've got that big lot that's on 12th and commercial. 
Right. It's just sat there and sat there and sat. Plan for the, and it's been there forever. It's like, um, what are we doing with it? You know, so I do see those sort of things happening in in your our community yeah. as well there. Yeah, there is a group organizing that space, I know, but they haven't got it together yet. It's like, cause it, it, it would be beautiful, but yeah. So perhaps, if I can, just to expand a little, mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, one of the things we did at the very beginning of the year with, with Pete and others was that uh, outside of the community plan, we, we have issues with the viaduct, we have issues with fire and vegetables. And so we got together, Strathcona, Grandview, Falls Creek. Uh, DNC were signatures as well. DNC, actually. Was, yeah. that's right. Uh, so we had this little coalition which dealt with the council with the viaducts issue. Now I had a problem with my Yeah, well, we all did. <laughs> but the interesting thing about that was that every group had a different view of the viaduct. But we found we had one thing in common that was we weren't being treated respectfully by the city. And that was the key. So we could work together, even though we might have different ideas. You know, there's a lot of people in Grand who don't want the viaducts to come down and, you know, whatever. Oh, well. This is with me because they're looking at 151 million plus to tear it down. And we got two major entertainment centers down there BC Place and the Hockey Arena. That's what they will put there. Because when these events are on, all right, we got them to uh, Viradox. That is going to get plugged up. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, because the, the, this is a, a, a peninsula, like a funnel, we got. Uh, Cordova, you got Hastings, Penny, and they come over to set it. And the stuff you're talking about, they had the funnel back in the middle. Right. Because it's a funnel. Right. You can't. And you only got two, three drainage over on the other side. You got Ferrars, uh, the Grandville Street Bridge, and the Cannon. Right. That's the only three drains that way. And you got Hastings, Pender, and that's it. You ain't going to put no more roads in. Right? And uh, the thing with the, the <coughs> fire dock. Come down to the central main street, you go right, left, and then you got a hockey game, football game on. Well, you don't have to go there. Go right over. Right. And if you look underneath the bridge, there are water mains underneath that bridge. All right. It's going to pay the, you know, we we turn the water mains, and then we don't know what other kind of uh, what the city can be paying for to move other kind of electrical uh, cable. Has a new sum of $161 million. And then, like you were saying, you were looking at where to go last time we were talking. Yeah. You look at it, where you, you're not even telling me. Yeah. And when you visually look at it, because you're going to end up making Dunsmuir or Dead End Street and Georgia Dead End Street. So you go up to the two right? Yeah. So, so the work we did right. at the beginning of the year with the like coalition, if I can just, uh, I might just briefly. Uh, led to an idea this summer. When, when the Emerging Directions came out in Grandview, about the same time, Emerging Directions came out in Pierre, it came out in Yassel, it came out in West End. And it was clear that all four groups, all four neighborhoods, had the same problem. Again, it was, it was being treated disrespectfully by the city, there, was not enough, there wasn't proper involvement. So we started talking, the four, four groups in the four areas started talking, and that very quickly evolved into the coalition of Vancouver neighborhoods, which is now a group of 21 neighborhoods right across the city. And, and the plan for that, just to let you know, is, is to build, is not to deal with site-specific issues, but we're not going to get involved in causes. Um, but we want to design a whole new planning paradigm, a whole new relationship between the city and the neighborhoods. So that's what the coalition is. Um, and certainly, working together, we have a lot more power than we have individually. That is, that's a darn show. Are we a member? It's the old union. Yes. Yes. The old union statement, you know, together we're stronger. Uh, Richard, Ron, Hannibal. Yeah, I, I think you said uh, James Michael. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went up there with cards. Um, we've been trying to uh, keep up with what's going on. I, I get the emails, but I don't always have time to read them. Um, and the thing is, I mean, from our point of view, not to give a whole exhausting history of it, we, we obviously do have, you know, there was, a, I think, a year-long process to build the terms of reference and to construct this committee, which is effectively, as you described, some kind of assembly or, you know. Um, 
But that doesn't necessarily mean, as you said, the process works. Um, because I think that there's plenty of people in the neighborhood, including members of the DNC, that think actually the process was not very open. <laughs> and there, there was, you know, the, the selection for the committee was, was, you know, there were just particular people in charge of it and particular routes of information. And, um, and but the, the fact that there was a committee served the purpose of sort of creating the, uh, the veil of inclusion. Um, but, uh, but right now, I don't think, I don't know, would it be, would it be crazy to say that the, the situation is not very functional? <laughs> no, 